Hi, my name is Leah Day, and in this video I'd like to share with you a little bit about how the project works and how you can take these designs and use them in your quilts. All of the designs are stitched into four inch squares. I cut my fabric at around six and a half inches and then I layer it. I've got a top, uh, a batting, and a backing. I then go inside and mark a four inch square inside of this and this excess fabric on the outside that helps me hang on to the edges and achieve a, a really nice look throughout the block. If I cut this too close it can be really hard because the fabric wants to shift and wiggle around on you. So if you're going to follow along with the project and try this yourself, make sure to cut your blocks big enough so that you don't have really awkward areas right around the edges. So all of the designs have been stitched into these little four inch squares and once I get finished with them I trim them down and I place mine in a binder so that way I can kind of browse through them and look through them and, um, and still use these. I use these as swatches for my quilts when I'm trying to decide what stitch goes where. So keep in mind that these squares, when you see them on the project, these are kind of a sample. They are meant to showcase the design, they're meant to teach the basic steps and the basic rules of the design, um, but you can do a lot more than just simply stitching the design in a four inch square or a square period, any size. You can do a lot more with every design than this. So let me share with you a few tips about how this works. All of the designs in the Free Motion Quilting Project are governed by a basic set of rules very similar to cursive writing. So here I'm going to write the word quilting in cursive. Okay. I learned how to draw this, how to form that cue, how it attaches to the U and the I, how all of these letters are formed by basic rules. And once I memorized those rules, uh, it became no longer difficult to remember how to connect these letters together and make words. The same applies for free motion quilting designs. Let's go back to stippling again, since that's the one that most people are familiar with. Stippling is governed by the basic rule of don't cross your lines, wiggle around, and meander. It's a simple set of rules. Once you get used to it, then you can apply it anywhere in your quilt. You can draw it really big, or you can draw it really, really small. The same is true for your name. Think about how you can write your name, this is my name, written very small, or you can write your name very big. So all the designs from the project are just like this. They have a simple set of rules. Once you memorize the rules, you can put them anywhere on your quilt, big or small, it doesn't matter. Now let me show you how this works when you're actually stitching it. I'm going to start by stitching stippling on a very small scale, with the lines of quilting very close together. See how little my uh, quilt is moving, how little my hands are moving on the surface? I'm keeping everything very tight and just simply using the edge of the presser foot as a guide to keep everything very close together. Now I'm going to switch to larger scale stippling and I'm just simply going to take that exact same design, swing it out and elongate and make everything bigger. I'm leaving a lot more space between those lines of quilting so that the quilting design takes up so much more room. All of the designs in the project can be used this way. Every single design is stitched on a small scale as an example, but you can take them and expand them so that they work perfectly for a bed quilt or a baby quilt or really whatever you need to use them for. Here's a great example of what I'm talking about. This is a design called Lollipop Chain. and You can see it's stitched on a very small scale here in this block. This was done to showcase the design and teach you how it worked, the basic rules, and how to move from one area of the block to another so it filled evenly. Now contrast this with this quilt, that same exact design, 
was expanded and blown up so that it covered the entire surface of the quilt. It's even easier to see from the back. You can see how this is the exact same design. It was just simply stitched on a bigger scale and used to cover the entire surface of the quilt. All of the designs from the Free Motion Quilting Project, and these are all beginner level designs from the beginner level DVD, all of these designs can be expanded so that they cover more space and fill your quilt anywhere you want to fill it. Keep in mind that there really are a million different ways to use these designs. Here's a design called Basic Spiral stitched on a small scale. And here is Basic Spiral on the border of a quilt. I stitched this on a medium scale and I kind of bent and twisted and kind of squished it in around these applique shapes. And this is a great example of section quilting, which is a different style of quilting where you use a different design for every section or area of the quilt surface. So you have one design for the borders and one design for the sashing and one design for the blocks. It's a great way to fill your quilt with many different textures and beautiful free motion quilting designs. Okay, so I hope that that has helped you understand kind of the basic idea behind these designs and why I stitch them out on four inch squares and how you can take those squares and kind of that basic tutorial and apply them anywhere to your quilts. Now when I teach a workshopping person, I always have my students work on four inch squares and there's a good reason for this. A four inch square is easy to move on your machine and it's not a lot of fabric, so if you mess it up, it's not that big of a deal. You can just throw it away and grab another one and keep practicing and playing with it. Once you find a design type that works well for you and a design that you're really enthusiastic about learning, take that design and stitch it over an entire quilt. You can see this is lollipop chain over the whole surface of this quilt, and I promise you, by the time you get finished stitching it, you will feel so much more confident about free motion quilting. You will have learned loads about moving and shifting the quilt over your sewing machine. And you will have memorized that design and be able to stitch it not only on a big scale, but also on a small scale. I hope that this has helped, and I really hope that you will use the designs and start quilting your own quilts on your home machine. Learn more about the Free Motion Quilting Project at freemotionproject.com.